Today, I'm gonna to show you an amazing tool for matching light perfectly in a composite. Hello and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. Today's episode is so great. I'm going to share with you a technique that we've developed that will help you match your lighting for a composite photo. This technique revolves around matching your highlight and your shadow levels for your subject and your background. Many times you can cut your subject out perfectly, but they won't fit into the background. Maybe the highlights are a little bit too bright, maybe the shadows are a little bit too dark, and if those things don't match up, you have a hard chance of making your composite actually look realistic. In this tutorial, we'll share with you the tools and techniques we use to match lighting, and we're providing a PSD file with our subject already cut out. You can download that on flurn.com and follow it along. So we do all the hard work for you, cutting out the subject from the background. All you have to do is match the lighting. So here in Photoshop, these are the assets you can download from flurn.com. Now our image on the left, our subject is actually already cut out. So we can take a look at our layer mask. If I hold shift and click on our layer mask, you can disable it and see that our subject actually is already cut out from the background. Now I'm gonna hold alt or option and take a look at our layer mask here. Main reason being, I recently developed a new technique for cutting out hair. Again, I've been doing Photoshop for many, many years. And I just developed this technique last week. So I'm, I'm personally very excited about it. Okay, now let's hold alt or option again and what we wanna do now is bring in our new background. So let's go ahead and click on our background. We're gonna grab our move tool and I'm gonna hold shift, click and drag from one image to another. And then we're just gonna simply place this background underneath our subject. There we go. Now I'm gonna hit F for full screen. The first thing I wanna do is just get these two images looking a little bit better. Uh, she's not exactly positioned right in the scene. So we're gonna click on our background I'm gonna hit Control or Command T and we're just gonna bring our background down a little bit. There we go. So helping out to match the perspective a little bit better. Now the next thing you'll notice is that our subject here is just slightly out of focus, okay? And our background is, it's in a little bit more focus than I'd like. So I'm gonna click on my background. We're gonna right click and convert that to a smart object. Anytime I apply any filter, I prefer to do a smart object first. That way I can change that filter later. So we made it a smart object, our background. We're gonna go to filter, blur, and I'm gonna go to box blur, which is my new favorite blur for applying background blurs. There we go, just blurring the background a little bit, and that's gonna help it just make it blend in a little bit better with our subject. Okay, so now everything actually looks pretty good. I mean, there's more work that we could do to help our subject blend into the background, but kind of the main thing at this point that's making this not really work is the light levels. And that is a very difficult thing to tell just with your eyes, right? Like, are the highlights too bright or the shadows too dark? It's really difficult to tell that just by looking at. It. So here is my favorite technique. It's called a threshold adjustment layer. Now, chances are you may have never used this adjustment layer because it looks pretty useless, honestly, when you first apply it. Let's go ahead and add one to this image and we'll see what it does. So let's go to our adjustment layers here. Okay, we're gonna go to threshold. There we go. You can also get to your adjustment layers by going to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and down to threshold. So what does threshold do? Well, it sets a point in your image and basically takes everything that's to the right of that point and turns it completely white and everything that's to the left of that point and turns it completely black. Now, this is used as a tool. Obviously, we're not gonna have this visible on our image when we're finished, but we're using this as a tool to help us analyze light. It can show us basically the highest highlights in our background compared to the highest highlights in our subject and the same thing with the shadows. So let's just jump into Photoshop and show you how to use this threshold layer. So getting back in, what we're gonna do is start with our highlights. So I'm gonna click this and drag from the left to the right, and we're gonna see that most of our image is turning black, except for mostly our sky. Now, as I continue to go over, at this point, our sky turns completely black, meaning that 
like we've reached the brightness level of our sky and anything brighter than that is going to be white anything darker than that is going to be black the sky is the light source for your images right it's a giant light source so that actually has to be the lightest thing in your scene unless you have another light source right like because it's lighting everything it's it's the light in this case what i have here this is super interesting what i have here is after the point where my sky turns completely black i still have detail i still have light areas here on my subject now let's just lower the opacity of that threshold layer to kind of give you a sense of how that works these highlights in our subject's pants are actually brighter than the sky. And that simply shouldn't be. The sky should be the brightest point. Everything should be slightly darker than that. So already I have a lot of information that I can use. The light parts of my subject are simply too light for this image, okay? They're brighter than the sky itself and that, that should never be. So how do we fix that? Well, all we have to do is grab a levels adjustment layer. So we'll go to levels. I'm gonna make sure to clip this to my subject so it's only visible on my subject. You can just right click and say, create clipping mask. And remember, this is only gonna be visible on our subject and we already decided that the brights, the light areas are too light. So what we're gonna do is go right down here and we're gonna take our light areas and we're just gonna simply make them darker. Boop. And as I make them darker, keep in mind this threshold layer is still on. As I make them darker, you can see that now the brights in my sky come in and the brights in my pants come in as well. The brights in the pants are still probably like a little bit too bright. So we'll just bring this down just a tiny bit more. And there we go. We've basically matched the light levels from the sky to our subject. And we're gonna see the details in my subject start to come in about the same time as the plants. Perfect, let's bring the opacity back up so we can see that light levels in the sky come in and then we start to get the highlights in the pants and it does make sense because these are white pants so they will be pretty light now let's take a look at our shadows as we go through we're looking at our mid-tones here and all that looks pretty good going on to our shadows already right here i'm noticing something there are still a lot of shadows visible in our background right in the plants behind our subject there's a lot of shadows visible but pretty much all the shadows have disappeared from my subject, right? I have to go right about here to start to see the shadows in my subject. So what this tells me is that I need to make the dark areas on my subject a little bit darker. So it's all about matching the subject in the background. So let's go back to this levels adjustment layer. I need to just make my shadows a little bit darker. So I'm gonna take my midpoint here and we're just going to click and drag that from the left to the right just a little bit and that's basically just going to make our shadows a little bit darker and let's bring in our black point a little bit more as well and that's going to make the shadows even darker so now you start to see they start to go away at about the same rate there we go let's just make this layer invisible and show you what's happening here so as we go darker, you can see my subject is almost totally light. Pop that in, and it starts to make sense with our shadows. Okay, now at this point, it looks like our shadows are a little bit too dark because that's now the darkest thing in our image. So I've taken this dark point and I've gone too far with that. I just need to make sure I bring it back right to about there. There we go and that should look really nice. So all of this is done with the threshold adjustment layer. It's a layer that by itself isn't really that useful unless you wanna create an image that looks like that. But when you combine it with an analytical eye to analyze your highlights and shadows and then correct that with a levels adjustment layer, it can make a huge difference on your image. So the threshold adjustment layer, we can turn off at this point because we've matched our highlight levels from our subject and background, and we've done the same with our shadows. Let's go ahead and turn off our threshold adjustment layer and take a look at our image. So here's our image with the levels adjustment layer on that's correcting our highlight levels and our shadow levels. Let's turn this off and instantly we can see she looks too bright for the scene. These highlights look a little bit too bright and overall her shadow levels look a little bit too bright as well. Now, as we turn this back on again, we can see instantly she actually fits into the scene. Now, 
This levels adjustment layer that we use, right now it's on the normal blending mode, which will actually affect your colors as well. We only want this to affect our light levels, so it's super important we change the blend mode from normal to luminosity. And that's just gonna make sure that my color in my subject, let me just zoom in here so we can show you this. If we change this back to normal, see how it's really saturated in my subject? If I go back from normal to luminosity, it fixes our saturation shift. And there we go. So we can see there's our before and our after. We can see she blends in much better into the after. Now, if I wanna bring back maybe just a little bit of brightness in our subject's face, all I'm gonna do is paint black on our layer mask at about a 10% flow, just to bring a little bit of brightness right back here. There we go. And everything looks really, really nice. All we did is change the light levels and match them from one photo to another, and we've got a great composite image. Now don't forget, you can download this sample PSD as well as background on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. So in this episode, we used a threshold adjustment layer to analyze the lights and the darks of our images. Once we realized there was a discrepancy between the light levels of our subject and the background, we can correct that using a levels adjustment layer. Be sure to clip your levels adjustment layer to your subject so it's only going to change your subject and leave the background unchanged. You can use a threshold adjustment layer to analyze your highlights, midtones, and your shadows. The goal here is to have your highlights disappear on your background the same time as on your subject, as well as the shadows. Try it for yourself. You're gonna be blown away at what a difference you can make with your composite photos. Thanks so much for watching today's episode. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography tutorials every single week. I'm having fun making them. I'm hoping you're having fun watching them. Thank you so much. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Okay, that's a coot. Coot, coot, coot. Coot it out. It's done. That's a cut. Sounds like I'm saying a dirty word when I say coot, coot, coot. Coot.